The first thing everyone does when they begin their journey in Guild Wars 2 PvP is create a character. So the most essential question is, what class should I play? That's a complicated question, which the answer will change over time and with game balance. However, I will try to answer it as accurately as possible using my vast knowledge of social psychology and thematic identity. PvP in Guild Wars 2 does not require any leveling or grinding to get gear. You have access to all the build components from the start, so you can try it out yourself. In this video, I'm going to try to show off a few builds for each class with different roles for the core class. And what I mean by core is that when you are in the free to play version of the game, you only have access to five trait lines and you can use three of those five. When you own an expansion for each one you have, you get an extra elite specialization, which will change the class and the elite specializations can sometimes be better than the core but there are often core builds that are very good too and used in high tier play. So try to show each class and different roles that you can play as each class so you can see if it works out for you and even test out some of the builds yourselves if you get in the game and maybe decide if you wanna actually buy the game based on that. Warriors are master weapon wielders. They have access to the most weapon choices in the game, so they have a lot of build diversity available to them. And they have one of the highest base healths in the game, so you never really need to build vitality on them. And this makes them very survivable and allows them to be that bruiser that just goes into fights and just wrecks havoc. So their class mechanic is adrenaline which builds up whenever they hit something or are hit by something they can spend this adrenaline using burst attacks based on their weapon so the first build that i'm going to show you guys is a core axe greatsword warrior you'll be using the tactics strength and discipline trait lines and there's a lot of synergy between the strength and tactics trait lines because whenever you gain might with the Grand Master in strength, you will heal and give yourself endurance. But also the minor trait in tactics will give you healing whenever you give out might to an ally. And you get a lot of might for yourself, but also you share some might to your allies with For Great Justice. And For Great Justice gives out a ton of might and you get healing for each stack of might you give out. And you're also getting tons of might whenever you hit things with your Forceful Greatsword trait, and whenever you swap weapons. And you've also got the Fighter Rune to give you five might whenever you use your heal skill. So there's tons of might, which gives you more power, which gives you more damage. And you've also got a lot of fury uptime with For Great Justice and your Axe too. So the build has a lot of damage and it has a lot of sustain which makes it a very good duelist. So as a duelist, you'll be wanting to stand on nodes a lot, and because nodes kind of constrict your movement, this build is very melee-centric. And if someone wants to contest a node versus you, then you're going to be doing lots of damage to them and being able to shrug off any kind of damage they do to you with a lot of Condi Cleanse from Mending and Shake It Off and just Weapon Swapping. I put in an extra Sigil of Cleansing there as well. So... Yeah, you're pretty survivable on this build and how you want to be doing your damage is you want to try to land one of your stuns. So you have Rampage, which has tons of stuns. You have Bull's Charge, which is a three second stun with an Evade as well. And then you have Shield 4, which is another stun. And then you have Immobilize from the Leg Specialist trait in Tactics. So whenever you cripple, you'll immobilize. So Axe 3 is a cripple and Greatsword 4 is a cripple. So oftentimes when you're chasing someone, you want to open with one of those two skills and while they're immobilized, they can't dodge. So you can sort of like immobilize them from range and then land your stun into like an Axe 2 or a Greatsword Burst skill and 
yeah, it can be very dangerous to be near a warrior with this type of build because if you get hit by one stun, you might be dead if you don't have a stun break. So yeah, the, the axe skills all do tons of damage. They're a little bit predictable, but there's also a lot of range damage on this build as well because the axe three hits very hard, the greatsword four is a range attack, and you also can kind of like engage on people with rampage as well with the rock boulder. So this is a really good dueling build, and the next build I want to show you guys is more of like a damaging build. You play the role of like getting kills on people, but you're not as much sustainable yourself, so you never want to stand on nodes. This next build is the core rifle warrior. Rifle's not really amazing on warriors to be honest, but if you did want to try a different build than a full melee build, this is probably what you'd play. So you'd be running the Scholar Rune with the Berserker Amulet, so you want to be getting as many modifiers as possible. I've got the Opportunity Sigil and the Separation Sigil on your rifle, so that's where you're going to get most of your damage, so I choose the most modifiers. So you're going to get a lot of cripple from this build as well because you have the rifle 2 gives cripple. You have bolas which will also proc your opportunity modifier and then you've got separation because you know, you're probably going to be outside 500 range from your target to get that extra damage if you're using a rifle. And then you have the sword warhorn as well for just kind of like a utility weapon. You don't really need more damage than the rifle and the sword warhorn gives you sort of like the ability to kite and survive in between your bursts and if you've got a lot of support you could swap to a great sword here but generally i think that the sword warhorn is really good especially because the warhorn four skill charge gives you a buff that increases your next two attacks damage by 10 percent and this build really wants to go for a lot of modifiers right so the traits are Tactics, Discipline, and Arms. And in Arms, you've got the Signet Mastery trait, which whenever you use a Signet, you will gain a stack of a buff that will give you 100 Ferocity, which is just increasing your crit damage. And that lasts for a whole minute, so that stacks up over time. You've got two Signets on this build, and then you have Bolas, which can immobilize your target so that you can land your damage on them. So in arms you also have just skills or traits that increase your burst attack because this is mainly a kill shot build so in rifle your burst skill is kill shot and that uses up all your adrenaline and it does damage if you have depending on how much adrenaline you use up so you have a hundred percent crit chance on your burst skills so kill shot will always crit unless the target is uncritable or you have weakness on you and you also give a little bit of vulnerability when you land your burst skills so basically the build is going to rely on you landing that so what I have here is the signet of might which makes your next 10 attacks unblockable so you can use kill shot and even if there are projectile reflex or the enemy is using a block skill or has ages you'll still hit them so the only way people can avoid your kill shot is either line of sight, blinds, or evades, or invulnerability. So yeah, the kill shots are gonna be doing around like 10,000 damage because you have so many modifiers. You know, you have, in discipline, you have the burst mastery trait, which increases your burst skills damage, which is a kill shot, that is a burst skill. You have Destruction of the Empowered, which does 3% extra damage to your target, depending on how many boons they have. And you also have a little bit more adrenaline gain because of Crack Shot, which is just giving you more kill shots, right? Because you want adrenaline to land your kill shots. In Tactics, you have the Leg Specialist trait as well, because you can immobilize your target with your Rifle 2 and that can be really good for landing your bolas so you can like rifle two into bola into kill shot or you can you know do vice versa bola into your kill shot and then you have the martial cadence um grandmaster in tactics which 
reduces the cooldowns of your weapon skills whenever you land one of your burst skills if you have the passive up from tactics so it's like a 15 second cooldown there so you can use a lot of your rifle skills because of this trait because you're spamming the rifle skills to do damage and kind of like bait out cooldown then once you get maximum adrenaline you land your kill shot and then if that actually lands which it's pretty it's a pretty telegraphed attack right so that's why you want to have the immobilize and if you do land your kill shot you'll do tons of damage and then you'll also recharge all of your rifle skills and your rifle skills have count recharge on them so you can spam those out quite a bit and have immobilize and cripple and sort of like stick to your target that way and this is not a very good duelist so you don't want to be finding yourself in 1v1s you want to be around your team usually and getting kills and focusing targets with them guardians resemble paladins or monks in that they use magic to heal allies and to smite foes they can play many roles and are very powerful when surrounded by allies but can be weak if they're found alone their class mechanic is virtues which are multiple spells that can burn heal or protect allies and they must choose between keeping that passive benefit for themselves or being selfless and activating them for their allies and losing the passive so you can pretty much play every role as a guardian in pvp so i'm going to give you guys four builds just for the core guardian in pvp so the first one is going to be a damage build really good in team fights for just doing massive aoe burning damage this is a core burn guardian and you have the carrion amulet with traveler rune guardians don't have a lot of access to swiftness so you want to use runes that give you movement speed and then i have the sword torch scepter focus scepter focus is just really good for immobilizing foes and focusing them down and focus is just really reliable at getting extra procs for your justice passive and the focus 5 is just a very good defensive tool so the sword torch you're going to be running smoldering intel because you do most of your burns on the sword torch set so you want the burning duration but also the intel sigil is because you don't have any precision on this build and when you swap to sword you want to be immediately porting in and using your torch 4 and with the radiance trait you'll be able to use your torch 4 twice whenever you crit so this allows you to do massive burst with the build because you'll be basically radiating out burns because the torch 4 has a passive effect and an active effect so it's got a lot of aoe and then like a single target nuke so yeah you just go in with the two and then you just spam the four and then that does like most of your damage in team fights you want to be hitting as many targets as possible because of permeating wrath the virtues grandmaster trait and what that does is it makes your virtue of justice become much more powerful so normally whenever you hit with an attack it'll charge your passive and after five times it'll burn the target with radiate uh permeating wrath that's every three attacks and then it's also aoe so it scales up exponentially in aoe situations so it's just really good in team fights and because of that you don't really want to use your f1 active you want to save it for situations where you really need that burst or like someone is about to like the fight is about to end right and you don't need the dps you need the burst to finish it off or if you use your elite skill then it will recharge all of your virtues so you want to save the the passive but you can also use it in some situations so yeah you, you'll lose a lot of damage if you use it but you can gain some burst so you got to decide there and yeah that's pretty much the build it just does lots of damage you have lots of sustain with the um the valor trait line gives you meditation synergy so you heal whenever you use a meditation so you have a decent amount of survivability there but you generally still need to be with your team because there's not a lot of mobility on this build 
for disengaging. It's more like engagement. And then if you're in a situation you don't really think you're going to win, then you're definitely going to die because you don't have any disengage with this build. So next I will be showing you guys the core meditation guardian with the berserker amulet. So this is not so much of a damage build, but more of like a roamer. So you're having the berserk amulet and I said earlier that guardians don't have a lot of base health, so it's nice to have the carry amulet. Well, berserker doesn't give any vitality. So you take the speed runes because that gives you a decent amount of vitality. So you're sitting around like 13,000 HP, which still pretty low, but the build is very mobile and ports in and has a lot of leaps to get out with the greatsword and because of that you can sort of play the roaming playstyle of go in go out and you're using a lot of uh, the retail boon with the radiance traits to gain tons of damage modifiers and crit chance so with this build you'll get around 100% crit chance because you'll have fury whenever you use a meditation and you'll get 25% crit chance whenever you have retail and you'll gain retail whenever you use your heal skill and whenever you use a virtue and also your great sword symbol will also give retail so it's really important to have fury and retail up because that gives you your crit chance and where all your burst comes from and you also have retreat in this build with the speed runes and that helps you to be as mobile as you need to sort of fill the role of a roamer and what speed runes does is it makes whenever you have swiftness it makes you even faster than swiftness so yeah it's very good and it allows you to stick to your target because core guardian doesn't really have any movement inhibiting conditions so you just stick to the target with movement rather than making them slower and then also, you have a lot of Aegis synergy with this build because in Virtues, whenever you have Aegis, you will gain 20% more damage. So when you're about to do your Greatsword Bursts, you can pop Retreat and you'll do 20% more damage if they don't break your Aegis. Or you can use your F3. So yeah, there's a lot of damage on this build if you can time your Aegis and prevent it from getting uh, removed. And yeah, you just go in with your sword symbol you'll probably precast your um ray of judgment the focus four and then as soon as you get into melee range what you'll do is you'll pop your f1 that'll give you retail and then you'll swap the great sword use the two skill and from there you can decide to pull foes in with your great sword five and then use the great sword symbol on yourself and you have a lot of disengage with the greatsword 3 if you detarget that so this is a really strong build for going in and doing tons of damage i think if if you're like the enemies are rezzing and you put all of your symbols and you use your greatsword burst on that you're gonna like wipe their whole team so this is a really good build for cleaving down state bodies so is the burn guard but this one's really fast at doing it and yeah that's the meditation guardians next we're going to show you guys a dueling build for guardian so this is the core symbol guardian it's super tanky with the mender's amulet and the resistance rune mainly the resistance is for the toughness and the uh, passive condition duration reduction but the active effect is also kind of good with the elite signet so you have sword focus and scepter shield this is because these two weapon sets give out the most access to symbols. So basically you just have a ton of symbol synergy in this build. So you have the Zeal Grandmaster, which makes your symbols give you more damage. You have the Honor Grandmaster, which makes your symbols larger and last longer. So you just want to put symbols basically on the node and then stand on the node. And if the enemies try to stand on the node with you they're going to be forced to eat your symbols and that's going to be very good for you because your symbols are basically giving you tons of boons because of the honor trait that gives you might whenever you crit and 
all symbols give boons, right? And this is really good with the Valor Grandmaster Altruistic Healing because whenever you gain a boon, you also heal. So you have tons of passive healing constantly going out because you're giving yourself boons from the Scepter um, trait in Zeal. Whenever you're F1 passive procs, you'll be gaining might. Whenever you crit, you'll be gaining might from the Honor trait. So you're gaining tons of might and you're doing tons of vulnerability as well because uh, if they stand in your symbols, they're getting vulnerability. So this is just a really good build for going one-to-one -one on a node. Now, if you fight against someone who doesn't choose to stand on the node, this is not going to be as useful. But as a dueling build, you do want to be fighting on node very often. So yeah, this is just a very survivable build in 1v1 situations. And it has like tons of damage as well if you're gonna be fighting on nodes so it's really good at that role but you often will be easily focused because you don't really have that many burst survivabilities because the elite signet right isn't really comparable to renewed focus in terms of peeling for yourself but in like smaller scale situations the elite signet gives you way more sustain so you have to be careful there and decide whether you actually want to change those elite skills out because maybe you want to survive outnumbered a little bit more as a 1v1er. So next is the final build I'm showing you guys. It is a support core guardian. So you're using the Mender's Amulet here, which is pretty standard for all supports with the Soldier Rune. And Soldier Rune is really good because you're using tons of shouts and whenever you use a shout, you'll be cleansing a condition from yourself and allies. And then you also have the honor grandmaster, which is pure of voice. And that, instead of just cleansing a condition, it converts those condies uh, into boons. And that gives a lot of sustain to your team because you're cleansing two condies every shout and you have tons of shouts. So you're giving out a lot of Aegis as well because you have the shield you have the mace, which whenever you use the three skill and you actually block something, it'll give Aegis to nearby allies. And you have Tenacious D, which is the Valor Grandmaster. And whenever you give out Aegis to allies, it lowers the cooldown of your F3. And your F3 gives out protection, Aegis, and stability to your allies. So you have a lot of stability that you can give out to your allies with Stand Your Ground and your F3 coming off cooldown very often. And you also have, whenever you give your allies Aegis and it breaks, you will heal them. And then you have the Shouts uh, heal skill, which is a very big heal for your allies, but it's not as good a heal for yourself. So this is a very supportive build where you wanna go around and heal your allies. You never wanna be by yourself with this build because you don't do that much damage. Though you do have some supplemental damage, because I put in two intel sigils and the mace and the hammer actually have two skills that have very high base damage and putting on intel sigil makes those two attacks crit so the mace three if it blocks something will do a counter attack that does a lot of damage and the hammer two is really good as well so these two weapons can actually do quite a bit of damage in bursts but then your, your damage will drop off immediately as soon as you've used them. And that can be really nice for giving your allies a little bit more damage to their target while you're also supporting them. And then the hammer in general just has tons of CC to allow you to take control in team fights and peel for your allies. And you've also got the shield, which is ha has massive uh, peel for your allies with the instant knockback. So yeah, this build is really good. Has a lot of healing for your allies, but you can go for more healing if you want to go with a staff, but I feel like it's not really that good. And now that you have retreat is very good because it's been buffed. You have permanent swiftness uptime, so you don't really need the staff. So yeah, this is just a pretty solid support and the you can use the elite signet as well to give your allies a full heal. So in those kind of situations, you can give yourself stability to cover the long cast time of 
the elite signet and yeah you can give your allies a massive uh, sustain from it. Necromancers have a very dark theme to them. They specialize in the powers of life and death, raising minions and draining health from others. In the lore, they're very morally gray because they do things that others would deem inappropriate to the dead. Their class mechanic is Death Shroud, which acts as a second life bar and gives them different skills that they can use. They gain life force to enter the Death Shroud by landing certain abilities or by being nearby when things die. So I'll be giving you guys the core Condi Necro build first. So you'll be using Staff with Scepter Dagger, or you can use the Warhorn. I like to use Wizard Amulet with the Traveler Rune because the Curses trait line gives you a lot of synergy with Precision and Condi damage. So I like to use an amulet that has precision and condition damage always. So wizard is, is the best for that other than rabid, but you really like to have vitality on necromancers too because it gives them more, uh, their life force gauge has a higher scaling the more vitality you have. So you usually wanna go for vitality on necromancers. So I like vitality, precision, and condition damage and wizard amulet gives you all of those and then a little bit of power, which is nice. So I take Soul Reaping, Curses, and Blood with the Doomfire trait. So Core Necros have a lot of Shroud, much more Shroud than the Elite specializations for Necromancer. So oftentimes you're in Shroud and there's not really much damage you can do because you're trying to just land all of your abilities and then you want to use the, the second life bar as a survivability tool so you're kind of just left to use your auto attack in death shroud so you want to buff that up with doomfire and it'll give you a little bit more burning which does a lot of damage over time it's the strongest condition in the game you also take all of the fear traits so you have terror and fear of death which increase the duration of your fears and make your fears deal damage. And Core Necromancer has the longest duration fear because it's single target. So you can often burst down single targets with combos that involve using fears. Also, you have the Staff Mastery trait, which makes all of your staff skills give you life force, which is really good because that gives you survivability, but it also gives you unblockable marks. So your staff skills will always hit classes that use blocks very often. In Curses, you'll also be using the Grand Master that gives you weakness very often when you go in Shroud and whenever you critically hit people. And there's an ICD of like 10 on that. And you also will give whatever conditions you have on you when you enter Shroud to your enemy. So it's like a condition transfer. And that's really good with the blood magic trait, Unholy Martyr, because when you enter Shroud, you're gaining Unholy Martyr and you're also doing Plague Sending, which basically whenever you go in Shroud, you're gonna gather up conditions from your allies from the Unholy Martyr. And then the next enemy that you hit, you'll transfer those conditions to. So it's very good at supporting your allies and then forcing those onto your enemy and sort of getting a massive nuke because when you enter Shroud, you're also going to be doing your fear and you're going to be doing your Tainted Shackles, which is one of your hardest hitting abilities. And yeah, so the combo of this build often involves going into Shroud, pressing your five skill, which is creating a tether between you and your ally or your enemy, and then using your two skill and then fearing them with all those conditions on them so they can't cleanse them. And that does a lot of damage over time because the terror's ticking, you'll have bleeds, you'll have whatever conditions you've transferred, and while they're feared, they, you know, your teammates can also kill them. So it's a really good build for disabling enemies and kind of debilitating them too because you have a lot of weakness and chill. Also, in this build, you have a lot of Condi cleanse for yourself. So Unholy Martyr is 
going to, whenever you leave Shroud, remove conditions from you and consume those to give you life force. So this build has a lot of Shroud generation which gives you a lot of survivability and because you have blood magic whenever you're hitting foes you're stealing life so it's a very good survivable build and because most of the build is very ranged oriented instead of the reaper build which has to go into melee sometimes it's very good at surviving if you know how to position very well and you've also got more condi cleanse from the plague sending so yeah, this build has a lot of survivability on it. It's very good for new players. So the next build that I want to show you guys is sort of a little bit of a taboo for necromancers. So necromancers are really not known for being duelists because when they're outnumbered, they're very easy to focus because they have not a lot of resistance to being stun locked. And when they leave their shroud, they're very vulnerable because there's 10 seconds window before they can re-enter their shroud and enemies know how to punish that usually. However, in a duelist build, you're often expecting to be outnumbered very often because you're isolating yourself on the sides of the map and whenever enemies respawn they'll usually try to go from their spawn to like one of their home nodes, and a duelist will often go to the far node, which is the enemy's home. So necromancers are not really known for going far because they get themselves in situations they don't want to be in, right? They usually want to be with their team, where they can get support and get peels from their teammates. However, this build is actually pretty decent and very survivable, so it allows you to survive outnumbered but is also very good at fighting other players in melee range because that's sort of what you do as a duelist, right? You're trying to contest the node and you have a lot of survivability and damage in melee range because of this. So I use the Paladin Amulet with the Melandru Rune. So Melandru Rune actually reduces stun durations on you, so it counters a little bit your susceptibility to crowd controls. And the Paladin Amulet just gives you vitality and toughness, which is good because as a Necromancer, you want vitality. And then you also kind of want to scale all the healing that you have with this build with survivability. Because if you just have a lot of vitality and not a lot of toughness, well then you're squishy and you don't have that much sustain as a result. So there's a lot of healing in this build and the toughness really scales well with that. But you also want vitality because you're a Necromancer. So you're using Dagger, Warhorn, and Axe Focus. Those are all very single target oriented skills because as a duelist, you usually want to be fighting one target. So the Dagger skills give you a lot of sustain because you have the Dagger 2, which heals you for a ton, and it also hits a lot of times, so it procs the Blood Magic Siphoning on top of that, which gives you a lot of healing and it's a very low cooldown so you can often just resustain yourself using that you're also using the blood magic traits of unholy martyr which gives you condi cleanse and that's really good because you don't want to be focused when you leave shroud so unholy martyr gives you the ability to cleanse condis when you leave shroud and it gives you that survivability you need to survive that 10 seconds window before you can get back into Shroud. So you have the Vampiric Signet heal, which the passive of that heal is it life siphons enemies who are very close range to you, and then you can use it to give yourself a nice heal and then put a debuff on the target, which will give you more life siphoning when you hit them. And this is really good trait with the Signet Mastery in Spite because whenever you enter Shroud, it increases the effectiveness of all of your Signets and it gives you those Signet effects as well while you're in Shroud. So normally when you go into Shroud, you won't get those Signet effects, but with the Signet Mastery, you do. And also when you use those Signets and they're on cooldown, you will still get those effects the passive ones, right? Because passive 
effects of skills when you use them don't they're not active or sorry they're not happening while it's on cooldown because if you use the active so it's sort of like you get all the advantage of using the active and then you go in shroud and then you still get the passive effect there and then you also have the increased cooldown reduction when you're in shroud so every second that you're in shroud your signet skills are coming off cooldown and this is really good with the signet of undeath because signet of undeath is a revive skill for your allies and when you're in shroud a long cooldown is reduced by much more so you can often go into shroud right after you res an ally with signet of undeath and then very shortly after be able to do it again so it makes a skill very powerful but often you're really not in situations where you want to res your ally right because you're a duelist but it does give you that ability to do that mainly you want signet of undeath for the shroud generation right because every second or i think it's every three seconds you will gain two percent of your life force and you can sort of make sure that this is always proccing on yourself because it only happens in combat by using your dagger three out of combat and the dagger three will put bleed on you and that will put you in combat and start your signet of undeath ticking and giving you life force so that allows you to sort of build up a lot of sustain before a fight and you also when you're in shroud it increases the number of targets that your passive heal signet is siphoning from to two instead of one so if you're outnumbered you're actually life siphoning double the amount from your heal skill so it's it's scaling up with how many enemies are fighting you only up to two but it does allow you to survive outnumbered situations better which is really good because as a duelist you're often going to be outnumbered so I really like this build for being outnumbered as a necromancer you also have the soul reaping trait speed of shadows so whenever you enter uh, shroud you will gain swiftness and you'll remove all movement inhibiting conditions which is really good for escaping because if you're in an outnumbered situation you'll often want to use your positioning to survive and if the enemy puts on like chill or immobilize on you you're gonna sit there and tank that damage so speed of shadows is very good for helping you survive in those situations and also you just have vital persistence which gives you more vitality it gives you more healing sustain and I also give you death perception with this build so you kinda of deal a decent amount of damage while in shroud because it gives you ferocity and precision while you're in shroud so you're gonna be spending a lot of time in shroud and your auto attack in shroud is a ranged attack which can deal up to like 2000 damage so it's not something to laugh at it's a very good skill then in spite you also have spiteful spirit which is whenever you enter shroud you're gonna gain retaliation if the aoe attack that you will cast around you lands and it will rip a boon and give cripple to enemies nearby and that's also really good for outnumbered situations because you enter shroud you cripple your enemies you remove cripple from yourself and give yourself swiftness so it allows you to escape very well and yeah this build is just really good for being outnumbered and then once you can kind of ensure that you survive those outnumbered situations you can bait the enemies to leave and keep one person there and then once you're in a 1v1 it's really good for single target damage with the axe you have a lot of vulnerability with the exposure sigil and axe 2 has insane damage with vulnerability stacking you have the focus as well all of those skills are very good at debilitating a single target and just really good in 1v1s and then the dagger gives you a lot of sustain and allows you to survive those situations so this is the build rangers are self-sufficient and in harmony with nature they understand their environment and use it to their advantage their class mechanic is they can tame pets to follow them and the pets can be controlled to attack a target 
return to the player, or they can use certain beast abilities depending on which type of pet it is. The first build I'll show you guys is more of a roamer DPS kind of ranger, and it uses the longbow. So rangers are probably one of the easier classes to play, but because they're better in small scale situations than in larger ones, and warriors and, and guardians are kind of good in all situations, they're a little bit harder to rotate or find the right place as a ranger. So yeah, they're probably still one of the easier ones, but not the easiest for sure. And the longbow is actually probably one of the easiest weapons to use because it's so rewarding and it's such a safe weapon because you have such long range. It's the longest range weapon in the game and it does so much damage. So this build uses the Zerker amulet and speed runes to allow you to get to the right positioning and then just fling arrows that do a lot of damage. And you'll be doing extra damage because of the separation sigil, which makes you do more damage if you're a certain range away from your enemy, which is very easy to do as a, uh, you know, a longbow ranger. And then you have exposure as well. So when you swap to your longbow, you just press the rapid fire and you do tons of damage with that. And you also have a decent amount of survivability on this build because of wilderness survival. So Wilderness Knowledge, the Grandmaster gives you Condition Cleanse, two of that, and Fury whenever you use a survival skill. And you have your heal skill will proc a lesser muddy terrain, which is a survival skill. You have Wilderness uh, Quickening Zephyr and Lightning Reflexes, which are also Wilderness Survival uh, skills. So those will cleanse Condies. And also, you have the Grandmaster and Beast Mastery is whenever you swap pets, you'll do a lessening, uh, lesser quickening Zephyr. So you have a lot of Condi Cleanse there, and you also have a lot of Fury. So Fury is really good with this build, not only because you're a Zerker amulet and you want to be critting, but whenever you gain Fury, you also gain Opening Strike, which is the um, marksmanship mechanic whenever you open a fight you will 100% crit your first attack and it'll do 25% more damage and with remorseless you will gain opening strike whenever you gain fury so every wilderness survival skill will give you fury you also gain fury whenever you disable a foe and you'll also gain fury whenever you use your heal skill because that will copy the boons on you so if you already have fury well, your heal skill already gives fury because it procs uh, you know, the lesser muddy terrain. So it's going to give you like two instances. So it's a little bit of a overwrite there. But yeah, basically you have tons of fury, tons of damage, and you have the shout resounding timber trait, uh, which makes your command skills all give swiftness and regen. So you have a little bit more sustain there. And with the speed runes, you have tons of mobility. So you can get into the right positioning and land your longbow and if someone tries to sort of like aggress you, you can kite and get into a new location to use your longbow again. And how you wanna use your heal skill is what it does is it copies the boons from your pet to yourself and yourself to your pet. So what you wanna do is when you swap pets, you gain quickness, right? So you wanna use your heal skill after you swap pets so that your first of all your heal skill has a quicker cast time because you have quickness on it but it'll also give quickness to your pet when you swap pets so you'll give quickness to yourself again you'll copy that boon so you'll give yourself more quickness and what you want to do is when you're in a fight you'll do something like you'll get in combat and then you'll immediately swap pets and use your heal skill and then you'll have a ton of quickness and you'll just open up with a rapid fire and then just auto attack with your longbow really hard and obviously using your heal skill offensively like that makes you a little bit susceptible to getting attacked but this is more of like a roamer build so you'll often be in situations where you're rotating into like a plus one where you're 2v1ing someone or you're focusing a target and trying to get that kill as fast as possible 
So using your heal offensively like that is pretty good still. But um, you also have a lot of sustain on the build anyways to make up for that. So you have protect me, which gives you a 4,000 barrier and protection. So protection is really good because wilderness survival will heal you for every second that you have protection on you. So you have regen, you have protection giving you re uh, sustain. So it's just a really survivable build for how much damage it has. But it's not amazing for being focused when you're outnumbered. So you have to kind of be in the right place at the right time. So yeah, I really like that build for just getting out a lot of it's, it's very rewarding, right, for how little effort you have to put into it, right? Because the longbow is such a usable weapon. Next, though, is a more of a duelist-oriented ranger build. It's using the same trait lines because wilderness survival is sort of, like, kind of mandatory on a lot of ranger builds. And beast mastery is really good with core ranger because the pets are a lot more... Um, they have a lot more presence. And... The Beast Mastery synergy with the Fury and the Remorseless is a lot more present in this build because you're using the Valkyrie Amulet. And the Valkyrie Amulet has power and ferocity, so you have damage and then crit damage, but you have no crit chance. So you have to get your crits from Remorseless, which is Opening Strike. So every time you gain Opening Strike, you'll 100% crit. And instead of using the Longbow, which is a lot of uh, multiple hits that doesn't make too much use of the opening strike you use the sword dagger and the great sword which usually deal in uh, very hard but singular hits so it makes use of the opening strike mechanic more and you've got two intel sigils as well which kind of have the same kind of effect and this allows you to be very uh, tanky right because the valkyrie aim has a lot of vitality on it and also to give you berserker type levels of damage without you know being no vitality so it allows you to be sort of like a 1v1er where you can stand on the node and not die immediately if you know you get outnumbered and then you also have a lot of evades on this uh, build because the sword dagger weapon set has three evades so the, the two skill is a leap which turns into an evade the three skill is an evade, which when you hit a target, recharges your two skill, so you can use the two again for an evade. And then your four skill is another evade. So you have a lot of survivability there. The great sword has an evade and a block, which turns into an evade, so there's just so much survivability on this build. And it's just, yeah, you, you try to 1v1, you find yourself on the side nodes very often, and you want to be 1v1ing. And since this is like a full melee build as well, you're not using the longbow it's um you know not that big of an issue for you to be in melee range so yeah this is a very good build and you also use the divinity rune just for more health and a little bit more stats i like the divinity rune a lot but you can use another one if you really wanted to like something uh to counter a certain matchup or something like that but yeah Mesmers take advantage of their opponent's minds using illusions and deception to gain an advantage against wielders of sturdy weapons and powerful magics. The clones they create make it difficult for the enemy to target them. The few seconds it takes to find which one is real taxes their opponents of their time, and they can also shatter these clones to dispel the illusion while creating a strong spell in return. The first build I'm going to show you guys is a roaming mesmer this is the power shatter core mesmer and you'll be using the berserk amulet with the eagle rune for getting the highest burst possible and you'll be using sword torch with the great sword so the great sword is your main burst weapon you'll mainly use the sword too and you want to be like in melee range ish because it bounces between the target that you hit and an ally and it'll give vulnerability and might to uh, the allies and the enemies respectively. And if it's you and the target right next to each other, you gain a ton of might and the enemy gains a ton of vulnerability. And then what you wanna do is 
you want to immediately use your mind rack which is your F1 shatter and you'll shatter on yourself and on the clone and it'll do a massive amount of damage because you've got that might and the vulnerability so that's your main burst there is like the great sword 2 into F1 and you also have in illusions you have shatterstorm which gives you two stock uh, count on your uh, mind racks so what that means is you have a lot of follow-up so if you say land your burst on someone and it doesn't fully finish them off you can go in for another one and um, the fact that it's a count recharge also gives you a lot of flexibility because when your skill is off cooldown you kind of want to use it to get the cooldown started again and this allows you more flexibility in when you want to use your burst because you can use your first burst to sort of like bait out a cooldown and then you can get value on that cooldown coming back and then you can use the second burst while the first one is recharging and it feels a lot more effective for the play style of Mesmer whereas if you have one count recharge then you're using one every 10 seconds whereas if you have two then you can use two back to back and get a really good burst and that's kind of like the role of a roamer right is to have good burst so you'll have not any really much better dps by having two count recharge but you'll have a lot better burst and i really like that and then you also have higher crit chance because of the grandmaster and illusions on your mine rack so it will always pretty much deal really good damage when you do that you also have in domination you have a lot of boon rip whenever you shatter so you can remove like protection and stuff and your shatter skills deal more damage so yeah your f1 is very important in this build because you have a lot of traits allocated to it and you also have chaos so chaos gives you prismatic understanding which increases the duration of your stealth and you have stealth with decoy and you have stealth with the torch for the prestige and you have mass invisibility which gives stealth to your allies and you use that to sort of find the right location without the enemies being able to know where you are and you can burst people from stealth or you can just go to a place where the enemies kind of want to follow you but they won't know where you are and you can sort of like outnumber and that's the role of a roamer right is to get kills as quickly as possible so you use the manipulations trait in chaos as well because you have a lot of manipulations on this build and whenever you use a manipulation you gain super speed which gives you a little bit more movement speed because you're not not really getting any movement speed on this build other than a little bit of swiftness when you're in stealth and it reduces the recharge of manipulations and uh, that includes your elite which is mass invisibility you have arcane thievery which steals boons and transfers conditions and also your blink skill which is a very strong stun break with a 1200 range port so uh, a 25 second cooldown on blink is just really strong so that's why i really like chaos with this build and it just gives you so much mobility so much sustain because you remove boons from people and give them to yourself you also have a little bit more condi cleanse because mesmers are a bit weak on condi cleanse so yeah it's really nice and also you have mirror heal so you can just kind of use that aggressively to give yourself super speed and more movement speed and it also uh, the mirror heal is like a reflect in some cases so you have reflects which are very good versus rangers or other projectile classes so also you have your distortion will also reflect so you got to be careful there a little bit because if you go in stealth while you're reflecting you might hit someone and reveal yourself so you got to be careful with that and yeah otherwise the build relies on a lot of clone generation from the trait in illusions so whenever you gain stealth you have to be in combat you will gain an illusion as well or a clone and decoy gives you a clone already so what you can do with like a burst for example is you can go into a fight and say you're in stealth maybe mass invis or torch four and then you'll go in your burst combo will be blink 
right next to the target, use Greatsword 2, that'll create a clone, and then you'll use Decoy on the target, and this will be like right before you, you lose stealth, right? So you want to be gaining stealth to gain the extra clone. So you pour it in, and you Greatsword 2, then you Decoy, and that'll give you three clones. And that'll give you the ability to use a Mind Rack with three clone shatter with almost no setup. And yeah, the, the mine rack does tons of damage and that can give you a really good burst. So yeah, that's pretty much the standard burst combo. There are other ways to get it with like a sword immobilize and you can put um, your torch in there somewhere. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of play to this build and I find it really enjoyable. The next build is more of a duelist so this is like a Condi chaos inspiration dueling mesmer and it just has so much survivability from the chaos and inspiration those are like the two main survivability trait lines for mesmer and uh, with with chaos you have the staff mastery you're using a staff on this build which gives you um, protection whenever you get chaos aura and you gain a lot of Chaos Aura from the staff as well because the 4 skill gives you Chaos Aura which is such a strong aura because it gives out weakness sometimes and it's a like 3 second duration weakness and you'll also gain uh, Chaos Aura when you use your staff 2 inside your staff 5 and then you have like 2 staff 5s because of the Chaos trait uh, method of madness whenever you use a heal skill you will put down a chaos storm on top of yourself and you can use that with your staff too as i said to gain more chaos aura which is just a lot of survivability because it gives you cripple and weakness to whoever hits you and it's really good also the build relies on a lot of the dueling trait to do its damage so you have a lot of survivability as i mentioned but you have a scepter pistol on so the pistol four is the phantasmal duelist and the duelist with the dueling trait will give bleed on its attack and that can stack up to like 11 bleeds if someone tanks the whole pistol phantasm and it's like a 20 second cooldown but you have many ways to reduce the recharge of that pistol phantasm and that's where a lot of your damage comes from is getting that pistol phantasm out as much as possible so ways that you can reduce the recharge are from the dueling trait which is whenever you interrupt a foe you will reduce the recharge of all your pistol skills by 25 percent so interrupting a foe is different from disabling you need to interrupt an action rather than just disable them if they're not doing anything so you have to kind of time your, your dazes very well, but you have a lot of dazes or interrupts with this build because you have your F3 is a daze, which will have no animation if you're in melee range. You have mind lock from the mantra utility, and you also will have your pistol 5, which is not as easy to interrupt with but it is a stun on your main target and it will daze other people so oftentimes even though the timing isn't good it bounces around and kind of interrupts people so it often does get you the proc to your pistol recharge and yeah you just want to spam out as much of your pistol phantasm as you can you also forgot to mention this your heal skill reduces the recharge of all your phantasms by 50% so you'll get more pistol 4 from that too oh and also you have chaotic interruption so chaotic interruption is sort of like the pistol dueling trait but it'll work on all of your skills and it's kind of random but whenever you interrupt a foe it'll reduce randomly one of your skills by five seconds so yeah there's a lot of recharge reduction and it just allows you to lock your foe down because if you're interrupting them they're not doing anything and then you've got more skills to use as you interrupt them. So it's like a huge momentum shift for this build to be spamming out more skills 
the more that you prevent your enemy from using skills. So it's really strong. And also, whenever you interrupt a foe, you blind them because of ineptitude. And also, blinds give confusion. And confusion does more damage when people attack through that. And you also have your F2, which gives confusion and blind. So it'll give like double the confusion. So you have tons of ways to really disrupt your, your enemy, right? You do tons of damage with your pistol phantasm. And then while you're waiting for the cooldown, you're dazing and trying to get that cooldown back. Or you're kiting around with staff and sort of like putting out blinds and confusion to make it harder for the enemy to really want to go aggressive on you because then they'll be using more skills into your confusion. And you also have the Blurred Inscriptions Grandmaster in Inspiration to give you a really good oh shit button from your Signet of Midnight. It'll give you Invulnerability, Stealth, and 5 Condi Cleanse on that skill. So it's really good. And it also allows your heal skill to give you a little bit of invuln in a a little bit bigger of a heal. So illusions, or uh, sorry, inspiration gives you a lot of sustain as well because when you shatter, you'll be doing one Condi cleanse on yourself and healing yourself. And you also lose conditions whenever you summon a phantasm. So the build is just really strong at surviving conditions. It's really good at surviving power builds because it has the chaos armor, which gives protection and weakness and it just has so much disruption for training down single targets and disrupting them. So yeah, this build is really good at dueling and 1v1s. Engineers love to invent and have many tools at their disposal. Because of this, they are very versatile and also susceptible to disruption. They may only use one weapon set, but can equip kits that act as more versatile weapon sets. Their class mechanic is that every utility skill grants them an extra unique skill on their tool belt. So engineers are considered jack of all trades. and that generally means that you're versatile and you can play many different roles but you're maybe not the best at any one of them so the first build i'm going to show you guys is a dueling sort of engineer build but know that it's also sort of useful for a lot of different situations but mainly it's a dueling build so uh, this build is a sinister amulet hybrid Core NG with the pistol shield, and it has a lot of sustain on this build, and that's kind of necessary for a dueling build with the alchemy and inventions trait lines with anti corrosion plating and purity of purpose. So, uh, whenever you gain protection, you'll cleanse a condition, and then with purity of purpose, you will convert that boon, uh, that condition, into a boon whenever you cleanse it. So basically giving protection to yourself can give you lots of boons and cleanse conditions. So in inventions, you'll be gaining protection whenever you use a shield skill, and you'll also gain protection when you use your heal skill, uh, which actually gives you, I think, protection because it's a elixir. It gives you protection because it's a invention, and it gives you protection because it's uh, you have the herald rune. So that's three Condi cleanses there, and then because it's an invention, uh, you're in inventions, your heal also cleanses another Condi. So you give yourself a lot of protection, and four Condi cleanses when you use your heal skill, the Elixir H. And you also get protection from the passive Elixir whenever you get uh, CC'd as well. And yeah, there's just so much sustain on this build because you cleanse conditions with all the protection you upgain. And then protection itself is good versus power, so you're very sustainable versus power and condition. And then you also have your F5, which is your crate uh, tool belt skill, which cleanses 13 conditions. So you have a lot of uh, gradual Condi cleanse with the protection, and then you have burst Condi cleanse with your tool belt uh, 
crate drop and that'll also drop med packs for you to pick up and give you more sustain and then you will also have a lot of damage on this build so you have explosives with the sinister amulet and grenadier with the grenade kit and you have a little bit of damage with your pistol but mainly it comes from grenades and the grenades you really want to be able to land those so you have slick shoes and you have the crate and you have your shield skills to cc your uh, enemies and then combo in with a grenade attack so landing your grenades usually is important so you want to just throw out like the auto attack of the grenade like the one skill and then when you land a cc that's when you want to go in with your big damaging grenades the two skill the shrapnel grenade and the poison grenade the five skill are your big damaging grenade skills uh, the shrapnel has a very high power coefficient and it gives out bleeds and the poison grenade gives out a really long duration and nine stacks of poison if you land all of them and it's also unblockable so super good and yeah it's pretty much a dueling build so if you're fighting someone in around melee-ish range it's sort of easy to land grenades anyways and you have the survivability to kind of stay in that melee range and then you also have the blast shield trait which gives a little bit more vitality to make up for the fact that you're using the sinister amulet so it's not like you just get immediately bursted down and it counters all the sustain you have you also have the shrapnel grandmaster which whenever you hit someone with an explosion you have 33 percent chance to cripple and bleed and all of your grenades will hit three times which means you know 33 times 3 you'll generally get that to proc every time you hit with grenades so you'll get out tons of bleeding and cripples from your grenades and that's cover condies and just in general more damage over time so yeah this is a pretty survivable build and if you really wanted to go a little bit more survivability on it you could go for like the uh, wizard amulet or you could go for like a, a vitality increasing um, rune like divinity or something like that but I like herald because the toughness scales really well with um, just how much condi cleanse you have so you're you're good against a lot of different damage types so the next build that I want to show you guys is more of like a damage dealing um, sort of roamer engineer build and it goes into fights and it does tons of damage in bursts and has a lot of CC and then it can leave fights very easily with the rocket boots so it's kind of like a gadgeteer um, burst build with the rifle and you have the zerker scholar so it's a pretty squishy build but because you have AED which is your heal skill whenever you use it you have eight seconds to die and if you die while well, you have that buff on you it'll heal you for like 12,000 which is insane for a healing skill and it'll cleanse all conditions from you and give you shocking aura so yeah that that is increased it gives you all that stuff because you're taking the gadgeteer trait and tools but it's just really good for a build like this because you basically take no sustain on the build and then AED allows you to make up for that with kind of like one skill so it's very easy for you to kind of proc the AED because you don't have all these passives trying to keep you alive and you just go in and be super aggressive while your AED is up and if it procs then you have a little bit longer to stay in because you get that 12,000 health and then you can use your rocket boots which is a really high mobility skill and low cooldown to get back out and maybe disengage and get out of combat for your sustain so yeah you have the explosions grandmaster flashbang which will give blind and that's really good for preventing people from you know preventing your burst combos so um, what you'll generally do is you go into your tool kit and the pry bar which is your three skill has a massive base damage of like 18 
100 damage so if you land that that can be like 5,000 crit and what you'll generally do is you'll magnet pull someone into the pry bar and then from there you can use slick shoes and you have your throw wrench ability which is really good because it has the damage when it goes out and then it has the damage when it comes in so it's really good for hitting people who are cc'd or people who are in the uh, down state you can use your rifle four at that point to knock them back again and that'll knock you and your enemy back and then you can stun break with your slick shoes um, tool belt skill and then do a lot of burst when they're cc'd from your overcharge shot and you also have blunderbuss which is your rifle three which does more damage when you're closer to the target and you'll also just have a lot of damage with the the toolkit auto attack and yeah you have so much cc on this build you have the crate elite you have the heal skill for aed which is like a melee range two second stun you have the overcharge shot you have net shot which is an immobilize you have slick shoes you have the pry bar pull it is just so much cc so there's so many potential combos that you can do to land your damage right and then another one of your high damaging abilities is jump shot so the last hit of the jump shot is a big hit so yeah you just want to try to land a single cc into like another one of your abilities and then you do your next cc and then you do another one of your damaging abilities then you do your next cc and you keep going on and if the enemy doesn't have stun breaks they'll start using them and they'll eventually run out and then you'll be able to finish them and if you don't uh, get the combo on them before you know they start pressuring you a lot you can always just disengage with rocket boots and yeah rocket boots because of the gadgeteer trait the 60 it's 16 second count recharge so you're able to have that for pretty much every situation you, you almost have to control yourself from using it too often because you feel like you can use it too much and yeah you have um, the tools traits that give you increased damage when you have vigor and you have your elite skill which has a lot of synergy with the toolkit trait because it lowers in cooldown every time you dodge and that's really good with explosives because in tools you gain vigor which gives you more dodges and then explosions gives you damage from explosive entrance whenever you dodge as well so you get a lot of damage from dodging and doing these combos with flashbang and stuff like that and then firearms just kind of just gives you modifiers so whenever you have fury you will gain more ferocity which is crit damage you get fury from explosions which is your explosive entrance and yeah you just have tons of damage modifiers on this build and lots of cc so that you can land those damaging abilities in melee range for extra um, modifiers so elementalists have mastered the use of elements they can use earth water air and fire magics to protect and heal allies or disable and damage foes they only can use one weapon set but are allowed to attune to all four of these elements to gain many more different sets of weapon skills. Elementalists are probably one of the hardest classes to start out as because they have so many skills that you have to learn and they have the lowest base health combined with the lowest base armor. So yeah, they're the squishiest class. But the build that I'm gonna be showing you right now is a duelist dagger dagger core Ellie and it uses the wizard amulet with the sanctuary rune and the sanctuary rune is really good with signet of restoration because signet of restoration heals you whenever you use an attack and that's really good with elementalists because you're spamming a lot of abilities out and it's more of a sustain oriented heal so it heals you for a little bit but it adds up over time and that's really good with sanctuary because sanctuary gives you 20 percent of that healing in barrier and the barrier kind of like allows you to get more sustain sustain to survive long enough to get the value out of your long kind of 
low burst, but over time it gives out a lot of sustained heal. And then in the build you also have written in stone, which is a really good trait for signets because it reduces their recharge and it makes their passive effects still maintained while you're on cooldown. So you can use the actives and still get the passives. So for example, the signet of restoration, you can be spamming all your skills and getting healing from that. And then say like there's a, a little window of opportunity where you can't do anything and you just want to use the heal skill for a little bit more healing. And then it's not on cooldown because you have written in stone passive still. And it gives you a lot of sustain back because of that. So it's like an extra 3000 free heal every 20 seconds just for taking written in stone with you know an animation attached to it. And then Signet of Air is also really good because it's a low cooldown stun break, even lower with written in stone. And then Signet of Fire is a really strong attack that does four stacks of burning for a really long time and it's long range. So if they don't cleanse that, it will do tons of damage. And also on this build, you have a lot of synergy with auras. So in fire magic, you have smothering auras, and in earth magic, you gain protection whenever you gain an aura. So you'll cleanse a condition whenever you gain an aura, and you'll gain protection, which is the two kind of like damage types of the game, condition and power damage. So the build is very sustainable, in my opinion, to many situations. And how you get these auras, you have to remember, because this depends on what your rotation is a lot. So you get your, your auras and essentially your sustain from swapping into fire attunement because of the sunspot trait in fire magic. That'll give you an aura. And then when you usually you want to swap into earth after going fire because a fire field with a leap finisher will give you fire aura. And in earth, the three skill is a leap finisher so you want to use your fire fields and then swap into earth and get your um, your aura from that combo finisher there and there's more that you can learn from combo finishers and fields if you check out on the wiki uh, just check out combo but yeah you also will get auras from water and air magic because you have weapon skills that just straight up give you an aura so you can also transmute those auras and get an extra effect, which will cleanse two condies. So there's a lot of condi cleanse on this build. You just gotta know where it is. You've also got a lot of protection because of the auras giving you protection and swapping into to earth gives you protection as well. So decent amount of sustain. And also you have ride the lightning because of the dagger offhand, which gives you a lot of mobility for disengaging or chasing targets and yeah, you have a decent amount of damage for like dueling situations, but uh, it's more of like a jack of all trades, to be honest. I wouldn't say it's a hard duelist because it doesn't really have the ability to survive outnumbered. It just more has the ability to disengage from fights because of the air, uh, right, the lightning. And then you also have Fiery Greatsword gives you a lot of mobility. You have Blink, so yeah, there's a lot of mobility on this build. It's very fun to play, and it's pretty nice for kind of like getting into the Elementalist class because it's also got a lot of sustain to it. You can also go for a little bit more sustain if you want from the Sage Amulet, but I like the Wizard Amulet because it gives you a little bit of precision, which allows your power damage to, to hurt a little bit more. Then you also have Blinding Ashes, so not only do you have a lot of Condi Cleanse and Protection, you also have Blinds every 8 seconds when you burn. So you can prevent your enemies from hitting you. And then in Arcane, you have the Evasive Arcana, which gives you an effect whenever you dodge. And those dodges depend on your attunement. So in Fire, you will give out Burn. In Air, you'll give out Blind. Earth is like a cripple and a bleed, and then in water it's a cleanse and a heal. So be aware of what kind of attunement you're in when you dodge, because it will give you an extra effect, and you can often combo a lot with those. So 
like if your allies put down a water field, you can use the earth dodge, which is also a blast finisher, into that and you'll get you know a heal from that. And if you earth dodge into your fire fields, that's really the only fields you have, uh, you'll get might, which will give you more damage. So just got to know um, there's also blast on your earth, uh, water three, so you'll get a decent amount of might if you know the exact kind of like rotation you want to do around the fire stuff, and yeah, it's just got to learn to kind of like do the rotation, and then it'll be all very easy. So what you'll do is you'll usually start out in air, you'll ride the lightning in, um, you'll generally press the three and the two and then you'll auto attack while they're getting stunned from your shocking aura then before you leave you want to transmute the shocking aura go into fire and if you get the stun you can land your fire 3 and do tons of damage with that probably go into the fire 2 and then fire grab and then right before you leave fire you'll use the fire 4 and then earth swap into the earth 3 you'll get the aura from that and then once you've got that immobilized you can use your 2 skill which would do a decent amount of bleed and then you can use the four skill, which is a knockdown, into the five skill, which is a kind of like a long channel attack. But if they're knocked down, they'll stand in it more likely, and you can land a lot of damage with that. And then from there, you have a choice: do you go back into air or water? So it's generally kind of like air, fire, earth, and then water or air. And then from there, you go fire again, and then you just restart the rotation over. So that's that build. Next I'm going to show you guys a core fresh air elements list and this is more of a roamer. It does pretty decent amount of burst damage but it's low on survivability so you rely on your positioning to kind of survive. So the idea of this build is the fresh air trait. So whenever you land a crit your air attunement comes off cooldown. So Generally what you do is you'll go into an attunement and then you'll swap into air and do a combo with like an air fire kind of like combo or a water fire or water air combo or even like an earth fire air combo. So um, yeah, so the whenever you go into air, you'll get super speed, which helps you to stick to targets and to kind of like kite and also you have arcane abilities so there's the arcane grandmaster which gives you ferocity and it gives you a condition based on which attunement you're in and usually you'll be in air attunement so it'll give blind but if you're in earth it'll give an immobilize which is really good for landing your burst so you can start out with your earth and you can press the two skill which will give you a little bit of like a rock barrier thing you can press the two so like generally a combo looks like this you'll press the the two skill precast that in earth then you'll use the two and the three and then you'll arcane you'll use both your arcane skills you'll swap into fire while they're immobilized you'll phoenix on their location and then you'll dragon's tooth and then you'll swap into air before the phoenix lands and that'll give you 250 ferocity and an extra ferocity from all your arcane skills as well and you can land some pretty good damage because whenever you swap into air attunement you gain a little bit of vulnerability you also gain vulnerability from the exposure sigil and you also have increased damage to vulnerable targets because of the water magic piercing trait so yeah there's a lot of damage on this build and you kind of have to get used to the idea of I use an ability in another attunement and then I swap into air to give that vulnerability and the extra ferocity that you get from being air while that ability is in motion so that it lands while you're in the air attunement and that'll give you the ferocity from the fresh air trait and just tons of damage so um, the sustain of the build as I said is very low most of your condi cleanse comes from the um, cleansing water trait but you don't really have that much regen access so whenever you gain regeneration you gain cleansing but 
You only really get that from swapping the water attunement and from the water trident. And then you have the earth four, which cleanses three condies from you. So not really that much condies. You can also use obsidian flesh to kind of just be invulnerable while you have conditions on you. But yeah, the build lacks sustain, but uses its mobility with a lot of burst damage to kill things before the sustain becomes relevant. So thieves are all about subtlety and deception. They hide in stealth or use their superior mobility to survive or choose which fights to take and which to leave. Their class mechanic is initiative, which is a resource that all of their weapon skills share. Because their weapon skills have no cooldown, they can choose to spend all of that resource on one aspect or to spread it out according to the circumstance. They can also steal two targets and use abilities based on which class they have stolen from. So the first build I'm going to show you guys is a roaming build, but basically all thief builds are roaming builds because the mobility of thief is just so oriented towards that role. So the first one is Dagger Dagger Core Shadow Arts Thief. And you have the Core Thief Steel, which is 1200 range port, and the Infiltrator Signet, which is another 1200 range port. So you have a lot of ways to port to a target and how this build works is you basically precast a cloak and dagger which will put you in stealth if it hits the target and deal a lot of damage and put vulnerability on the target and then you'll be in stealth and next to them so you can backstab so you're often trying to do cloak and dagger port backstab combos with this build you also have smoke screen which is really nice because it gives you a way to access stealth if you don't have a reliable target to hit. So you can put down your smoke field and leap finishers through smoke fields will give you stealth. So you can heart seeker through your smoke field and get tons of stealth and that gives you a lot of sustain because while you're in stealth you're cleansing conditions and you're gaining some stacks of the venom which will heal you when you hit as well. So the main idea of the, the traits is that you have Rending Shade in Shadow Arts and you have Even the Odds in Deadly Arts. And that means whenever you sneak attack, which is your one skill in stealth, you will rip a boon. And if the target has no boons, it'll fear, but generally that's not going to happen too often. You can do like a steel backstab combo. So you would steal boons with Bountiful Theft, which would be two boons steal, and then Rending Shade would steal another, but they still might have more than one boon there, and so they won't get feared by the Rending Shade. And then even the odds would give vulnerability to your target when you steal to them, and it will also give five might to you. So when you do like a steal cloak and dagger combo, that would do 10 vulnerability and then you would have the might so you, you do a lot of damage in your combo and then you just have a ton of sustain from improvisation because you gain two of each stolen ability and some stolen abilities have a lot of sustain for you like the mesmer glob or the ranger tree and they also can give you a lot of damage and control from like the Guardian Days stolen ability or maybe even the Warrior stolen ability which would give you Reflect. So yeah, Improvisation is really good and it also has a chance to recharge one of your utility skills from the 6, 7, and 8 slot and it'll recharge one of those randomly. So you have a lot of sustain and ability to make plays so like if you use your shadow step which is a double port ability and then you steal and get it back you can do it again and this gives you a lot more mobility and you also have infiltrator signet so two out of your three utilities are porting so you have a lot of ability to go in and out of fights with improvisation and your utility skills giving you ports and if you get smoke screen twice that's a lot of sustain as well because you're constantly blinding people and giving yourself instant uh, or ability to go into stealth and 
Yeah, it's just a high damage build. You want to find a target, use your five skill, precast it into your steel, and then once you've landed your cloak and dagger, you go for the backstab, and then you spam Heartseeker. And if they don't die, then you disengage with your short bow, and you can use the short bow skills to use detargeted evades so you have more mobility than just porting to the target like with infiltrator and steel so generally you use infiltrators signet and steel to go in and then the short bow to go out or shadow step and yeah that's pretty much the build next is a very similar kind of trait setup most thief builds take you know the same traits but a very different play style so this is a for pistol dagger condition thief and you have the same idea with shadow arts the same exact traits and in deadly arts you have pretty much the same traits so your sneak attacks are what you're trying to go for here you go in stealth and then you go for your pistol sneak attack instead of the dagger sneak attack which is a sort of ranged multi-shot which will give bleeding and do a lot of power damage so you're using the carrion amulet and that gives you a lot of power, a lot of condition damage, but the build is sort of slow. It doesn't have really as many ports as the other uh, dagger build. So we take the Traveler Rune to give you a little bit more uh, movement speed, and you have instead of Mug, which is giving you a little bit more sustain when you steal, um, you have the deadly ambition trait in deadly arts which just give you a little bit more condition damage so the idea of the build is you steal to the target and then you either use cloak and dagger which would put you in stealth so you can use your your sneak attack which would give a lot of bleed or you use your shadow strike which is your three ability which would give a decent amount of torment and gives you access to your repeater which is the three skill when it's been used recently after landing a shadow strike so you shadow strike and then you can spam repeater for a little bit afterwards and then you just try to go into stealth and land your sneak attack so you have a lot of access to stealth with your heal skill so shadow arts allows your heal skill to give you stealth so you use your heal and then you have two seconds to land your sneak attack right after that you have Shadow Refuge as well, which is a really long stealth area duration. And as long as you stay in that refuge while it lasts, you'll have a really long duration of stealth. But if you leave the Shadow Refuge before it finishes, you will be revealed. So you have to be careful of that. And you can actually combo this because it is a dark field. And your pistol sneak attack is a 100% projectile finisher. So it would give you a lot of leeching bolts from comboing refuge with your sneak attack. But that, that would obviously reveal you, so you have to decide whether you want to use refuge aggressively or use it to disengage and be defensive and passive and wait for the right moment to go in. You can also use refuge to res allies because they can be in stealth and your, your enemies won't know where you're resing. And... You also have the improvisation with this build. So improv is usually used with power builds, but I don't really like the poison trait with this build because you don't really use poisons that much after the poison venom got nerfed. So I like improv because it gives you a lot more sustain and shadow refuge is a pretty long cooldown. So if you land improvisation and recharge your shadow refuge randomly, that's pretty high value. So you also have, when you steal to the target, you, in trickery, you give out six stacks of confusion, which is really good for your burst because if someone tries to react to you right after you burst them, they'll be taking tons of damage from the confusion. So what you do is you jump on your target and you steal to them with your cloak or even your shadow strike and then if you cloak then you'd use your sneak attack or you use shadow strike into repeater and 
you just keep going ham and just spamming damage because if they try to react to you, they're going to take a lot of damage. Usually they won't react and they'll try to dodge instead. So yeah, it's a very burst oriented build and you want to kind of like look for an opening on someone and stealth around until you find that right moment. You also have Trickster with this build. So while there is less mobility on the build, there is a little bit more survivability with the how much stealth you have access to with Refuge and Trickster gives you a lower cooldown on your heal skill and it's also a Condi cleanse. So it's a really good survivable build for new players. And the last build I'll be talking about is sort of similar to the Dagger Thief build in Roll. You, instead of using the Infiltrator Signet, you will be using the Agility Signet. And the Agility Signet gives you more dodges and it gives you more Condi Cleanse because you don't have the Shadow Arts to give you more Condi Cleanse since you're using Acrobatics. So this is more about Evasion than Stealth, the Sword Dagger build. So the same idea, you have Improvisation to give you cooldowns back. You have the steel combos with your trickery traits and uh, cloak and dagger. But you also have the sword, which is a really strong weapon for poking targets down. So your sword too ports you to the target and immobilizes them. And from there you can use cloak and dagger and then you can use your tactical strike to daze or blind them. Or you can go for your larcenous strike, which is an unblockable evade attack which will then, if it lands, turn into another attack, which will steal boons and deal damage if the target has no boons. And that's also unblockable. So um, it depends on who you're fighting against, what you want to use. If it's a squishy target, then yeah, you generally want to use cloak. If it's tanky target and you want to remove boons or they have a lot of blocks, then use your flanking strike into larcenous. And yeah, it's pretty much just abusing your sword port into the target because you can also use the infiltrator strike to return back to your original location. So you go in with sword two and as long as you have your sword two uh, set, you always have like an escape option. So it's a very safe build to play because you have so much sustain from evasion and from porting back to your original location. So yeah. This is a really good build for beginners too because it helps you to survive and it still does pretty decent damage versus classes that are tankier than it because of flanking strike and larcenous strike. Revenants are the final class I'll be going over and I'm not going to give any builds for Revenant because a free to play Revenant doesn't really exist. While you can play core, you have to buy an expansion to even play the Revenant, so most people don't. But if you are interested in playing Revenant and buy an expansion, Revenants are basically, they're from the mists and they channel the energy of legendary heroes and villains from the past. They hear voices from these legends, but are not in fact schizophrenic. Their class mechanic is that they have more utility skills but they're determined by the legends they choose to listen to. These skills, along with their weapon skills, consume a shared energy resource, sort of like thieves, but they also have individual cooldowns like other classes. And swapping legends renews that energy, giving them massive power spikes. So if you want to try that out, you might have to buy an expansion or just check out a Revenant streamer. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all of the builds that I wanted to share with you guys. And if you have any more questions on what classes are like, you can join my Discord and ask me questions there or leave a comment down below. Like this video, by the way, if you thought this was helpful. Um, basically, the idea is, you know, you want to be able to try out the classes. So if you guys have any sort of like issue with any of the builds, just understand that they were designed 
to give you an idea of what the class is like before you buy the expansion. Obviously, you know, disclaimer, not all of these builds are going to be absolutely, you know, potential of high level play. You know, there's going to be some sort of uh, barrier that you get to when you'll need to buy an expansion to play a more viable build. Though, some of these builds are actually meta builds that are used in tournaments. You know, core builds do see uh, tournament play still. So, some of them are good, and some of them are just to give you an idea of what it's like. So yeah, anyways, enjoy Guild Wars 2, and yeah.